Good morning, everyone. It is time for Monday morning prayer and devotion. Thank you so much for joining me again today. I have a great praise report to share with you today, and I want to do that. And then hopefully those of you who are not signed on yet will be able to go back and listen to it um, later on as it is very, very remarkable. Uh, the Lord certainly worked a miracle for my dad uh, this weekend um, to kind of catch you up on uh, what had been happening on Friday after all week not being able to find out uh, what was causing infection. Uh, they consulted infectious disease specialists and although we still don't have the test results back, uh, he was suspecting uh, tick-borne illness as the reason for his uh, his recent hospitalization and all these medical problems he's having. And um, so then on uh, Saturday morning, uh, the hospitalist on call uh, came in. Uh, Dad was not doing well at all. And he said, I don't think he'll make it through the night. And he uh, I believe he has less than 24 hours to live if he does make it tonight. So the nursing staff discussed with the family, uh, discussed with us uh, tra transitioning to uh, comfort care only, and we rejected that, that idea because none of his organs were shutting down. They could not give us a solid reason why they thought that death was imminent. And so that was the condition on Saturday, he was not um, alert most of the day, only he spoke to us a, a few times with much, much effort. And um, his condition just appeared very grim all day Saturday, but Saturday night, everything uh, began to change. His blood pressure normalized, his fever began to come back down. Um, he was fully alert yesterday, uh, coherent, able to fully communicate verbally, able to eat and drink, uh, his blood pressure was good without medication, and the low-grade fever that had remained after his fever spiked back up to 103 on Saturday morning finally broke, and it did so without Tylenol or ibuprofen, so with no medication. Uh, so today, the situation is completely different uh, than it was um, less than two days ago. So yesterday was a great day. My sister messaged this morning and said he's doing still doing great this morning. Uh, yesterday while we were there, um, he asked for a stress ball so he could begin to uh, do some exercise with his hands in the bed. And that's been a concern for us from laying there um, and not being able to move much. Uh, his muscle atrophy setting in, which you know already he's very rigid from uh, the Parkinson's um, disease. So we're just so thankful for this turnaround. And we give God all the praise. Uh, there's no doubt that this has been a miracle that God has <clears throat> given to our family. <clears throat> Excuse me. But we thank you all for your prayers. It's so very important. And we know that the prayers of God's people have definitely made a difference. Also, my uh, uncle Robert, my dad's brother, uh, was at the hospital yesterday to see dad. Uh, first time he's been there because he had a car accident. Uh, last week himself and um, his grandson with him was ejected from the vehicle and uh, the result of that could have been much worse but he has a broken clavicle and a broken foot that's been repaired with uh, by surgery and um, so my uncle Bob was there yesterday he's been kind of stove up from the accident but he's doing very well Kevin's doing very well so we give God praise for that. My mom's recovery from recent neck surgery is going well. So we give God praise for that. Many prayer requests um, to bring to you today. Pastor Marty DeLott was admitted to the hospital last night with intestinal bleeding. This is the second time he's been admitted to the hospital in the last 10 days. We need to pray that the bleeding stops and that they will find the cause of this. Uh, Sister Marsha Moore uh, has foot surgery tentatively scheduled for June the 21st. She's waiting for her test results to make sure that she's able to have the surgery. So let's pray for good results for her. Jessica Marquez had recent heart surgery. Um, Amy C recovering from surgery. And as I mentioned, my mom 
recovering from neck surgery. Carmen Bolowers needing to have spinal surgery. So let's pray about that situation. Pray for Ben Ramey's stepdad, Harold Ramey. I'm sorry, his dad, Harold Ramey, uh, who has vein blockages in his legs. Uh, remember those who continue to battle diabetes, those with liver problems, Meredith uh, needing eradication of toxin buildup in her liver. Sherry needs a liver transplant. We have several who continue to deal with heart problems. Uh, those with kidney issues we're praying for include Olivia who needs a kidney transplant at last word. Her dad was being tested to see if he was a match and able to donate. Doug Seaball, Jesse Ramey, Kristen's friend Dave, and Oscar Smith also with kidney issues. Several with chronic stomach problems and mobility issues. Others with back pain and arthritis needing our prayers. Uh, continue to pray for those who suffer with Parkinson's disease. Um, we've been praying for my dad for many months um, or many years uh, due to Parkinson's and uh, many of these names have been on our list uh, for the entire time we've been praying uh, together on weekday mornings, including Marsha's mother-in-law Vivian, Carmen's dad Russ, my mother-in-law Beulah Ziegler, Kristen's friend Matt, and Tim Workman. I pray for those suffering with migraine headaches. Uh, Sister uh, Melana Cummins needs a touch. Yesterday she had a, a dizzy spell in church, and um, I suspect she might have had a migraine going on as well, but she's just been very ill for a long time and needs the Lord's uh, touch on her health today. And we know if God can do it for one, he can certainly do it for for the, the next one. Uh, Jamie Joe's Aunt Sherry uh, recently had surgery to remove cancer from her lung and actually had uh, half of her lung removed. She needs prayers for strength as she recovers. Others have chronic lung conditions. Uh, many who are battling cancer, let's continue to pray for all of them. Those going through precautionary treatments after successful cancer surgeries. Uh, Kathy Selby has had a difficult time with the chemo pills uh, to the point that she's been unable to work. And uh, Johnny, if you have an update on Kathy, we would appreciate any information that you have in that situation. Melana Cummins' mother, Vivian C., Kristen's friend's dad, Johnny Nelson's mom, and Ben Ramey's stepdad, Tom, all need uh, healing today, suffering with dementia and memory loss. Uh, Sarah Struth, Riley March, Carmen's sister, Tracy, and Pastor Marty DeLott, a battle illness. And, of course, I mentioned to you, Brother DeLott's um, being in the hospital for an intestinal issue uh, not related, I don't believe, to the multiple sclerosis, but he definitely needs a touch of the Lord today in both of those regards. Tracy needs her home to sell so that she can shorten her daily commute. Uh, Mr. Jennings is on hospice care. We've been praying for him for several weeks. Pray for him and his wife uh, in this situation. We're believing for continued recovery and full recovery. For Buddy Randolph, Anthony Sifford, Billy Huey, Johnny's nephew Joey, Sue Morse's nephew Dwayne, John Sutter, Steve Echeverria, Pastor Chris Dew, and Brother David Kent. Let's keep lifting them up. Uh, pray for the children uh, who are ill today and afflicted. Jaden Short with seizures. Stella needing a heart transplant. Brantley and Elsie with heart problems since birth. Darla's granddaughter with seizures. Tammy Lawson's granddaughter who has epilepsy. Abel with PKU syndrome and autism, and Abram has GNA01 disorder. In our other health needs, keep praying for Carmen's cousin Shannon, uh, Kay Kennedy, Sue Morse, Car Carl Metcalf, Lois Link, Eddie Potts, Randy Reeves, Venus, Pat Wilson, Robbie, Cheryl Lachance's uncle, Robin Tibbs, Kristen's friend Ann, Bob and Shirley Perkins, Cheryl Ogden, George Tibbs, Judy Williams' brother, Devin Huff, Michelle Clark, and Johnny Nelson. Um, pray for those who are in nursing homes. They need compassionate and competent care, and they need encouragement. Pray for our military personnel and their family members, um, especially during times of deployment, and we want to pray God's protection upon them each and every day. Uh, and our spiritual and family needs, keep praying for Belinda's uh, situation in her family, uh, her summer college classes, her car issues that she's had a lot of recurring problems with, 
Uh, her best friend needs our prayers as she battles depression. And Belinda uh, needs encouragement from the Lord. Shirley uh, needs um, a touch for her mind as she battles suicidal thoughts. Jeffrey needs reconciliation in his family and healing for his wife. We're praying for Stephanie and her children uh, needing restoration in relationships with much pain and dysfunction in the family. And we can pray that prayer for many today who are suffering with situations in their homes. Uh, several who are battling addiction, Josh, Jacob, Alan, Ashley, Dawson, Frank, Charles, William, and Dana. Also, Cheryl's cousin who's battling nicotine addiction. Uh, continue praying for Marcia's friends, Ashley and Linda, Annette and Dave. Um, families we need to pray for. The Cummins, the Perkins, the Joneses, the Marlins, the Clarks, the Moores, the Williams, the Pulliams, and the Biddicks. Also, Rose Brown's family needs salvation, and Johnny's believing for salvation for many family members uh, and many nieces and nephews uh, specifically. We need to continue to pray for revival in all of our communities and for the safe return of prodigals. And in regard to that, would you pray for our midweek rally this week with um, Brother Donnie Willis, uh, Metro Missionary to New York City, and pray for traveling mercies for him tomorrow as he'll be flying um, to Missouri from uh, New York City to begin his deputation of travels here uh, over the next week. Uh, pray for David to return to God. Uh, we need to pray for Beulah Ziegler's granddaughter and Judy Johnson's grandson. Lift up Cheney and Becca. They both need to return to the Lord and get back in church. Uh, J.R. Johnson needs the Lord. Our Mingo RCF residents and Job Corps students uh, need prayers today. Johnny and Gracie, we need to pray for them uh, to continue to grow closer to God as they pursue his purposes in their lives. Uh, pray for our North American and global missionaries again today and for uh, persecuted believers in access challenge nations. Uh, pray for peace and comfort for the Kaufman family. Uh, Dan Kaufman was one of Steve Cummins' close friends from his home church in Michigan. He passed away last week. The Cummins are, are possibly traveling there uh, this weekend for the memorial service, so pray uh, for them. Also pray for the Mitchell family, a uh, family from our church that's been on vacation, as they will be uh, heading home sometime this week, and we just pray God's protection and covering for them. Um, also pray peace and comfort for Jordan and Yen, who recently lost a preterm baby. And so this is devastating, of course, um, for them, and they need the Lord's help. We have unspoken requests for the Cummins family, very important uh, requests for today, a situation they're dealing with in their family, Judy Johnson's family, Johnny Nelson's mother, Johnny's brother, Alan, Johnny's niece, Jessica, uh, Terry's youngest sister, Robin Kay, Venus's daughters, Judy Williams' family, Rose Brown's family member, and Belinda with uh, unspoken needs today. If you have a need, please share that with us this morning. And uh, I would encourage you, uh, as I know many of you have joined us as we've gone along, uh, if you want a good pick-me-up today, you need to make sure at the end of this that you go back to the beginning of the broadcast and listen to the praise reports as God is working miracles among his people today. Good morning to you, Sister Pam. She's asking for prayer for her mom having pain and weakness in her legs from blood clots. Uh, so let's certainly remember to continue praying for Sister Perkins. And she is on our, on our list daily for her general health concerns, but today remember this need specifically. Johnny, good morning to you. Uh, thank you for praying with us so faithfully. Belinda, uh, asking us to continue praying for these needs, and I have mentioned those needs um, in the last few minutes, so let's do remember to pray for those needs. Good morning, Ben and Terry, uh, Marsha, uh, Judy, Kristen, uh, all with us this morning, and uh, we're all celebrating together, of course, this uh, miracle that God has worked for my dad. I thank you so much for your prayers and for rejoicing with us today. Marcia reports that their granddaughter, Addie, had a wreck. She was not harmed, so thank the Lord for that, for his protection. 
um, in that situation. Let's go to the word of the Lord today as we finish up our study of Psalm 91 with verse 16. Uh, with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. We talked about the promise of long life and not just long life, but a satisfied life. And uh, today we're talking about the last phrase in this chapter, the promise that God will show uh, those who love him his salvation. That is the seventh promise that he gives to us in this passage to behold uh, simply means in one version it says, let him, I will let him behold my salvation. In this chapter it says, I will show him, or in this version of King James it says, I will show him my salvation. So in this context, to show or to allow to behold simply means to see something and take hold of it and make it our own. God wants each of us to take hold of his salvation uh, the movement of this last line in Psalm 91 describes our ultimate final victory. And the order of the sentence gives us a promise that we will see salvation face to face during and after our long satisfied life. This moves us beyond an intellectual knowledge of salvation to a relationship. Uh, those who attend our church, I'm sure, have heard me say it so many times that when I begin to say it, they already know how to finish the sentence, but I often say that I have eternal life right now. You can't see it because until I lay down this body, that eternal life is not going to be manifest um, through the resurrection. But I have eternal life right now. Uh, it already abides in me because I have been filled with the Holy Spirit. And the same Spirit that raised up Christ from the dead is going to quicken my mortal body, whether it's um, whether it's in the grave or whether I'm alive and remain, I will put on immortality in that moment. And that's what many times we view as salvation is what happens after our um, life, the salvation um, that we get to go to heaven and be with the Lord. But we're experiencing the promise of his salvation every day of our life. It's not just a knowledge that we're going to be with the Lord in eternity it's not only securing our future, but it's working in us now. And Jesus constantly reminded us that salvation is now. Today is the day of salvation. It has come. Uh, many people are surprised when they look up the word salvation in a biblical concordance and find that it has a multifaceted meaning that is more than just our ticket to heaven. And we often miss the richness of that promise. According to Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, the word translated salvation includes health, healing, deliverance, rescue, safety, protection, and provision. All of that is wrapped up in the salvation that God says, I will show to the one who loves me and who abides under my shadow by their own choice by their own desire they come under my umbrella of protection many uh, folks read psalm 91 and simply see it with their eyes but very few behold it in their daily lives and my prayer is for that to change that each of us would be aware that today my healing my deliverance uh, my health uh, in general uh, my state of mind all is affected by the fact that, that I understand and am living in the power of God's salvation. Yes, his uh, protection, his provision, Kristen, uh, is with us today. Today is the day of salvation. It has come, and we are jo enjoying the benefits of it today. So, Lord, today I pray that my understanding will be enlarged to realize that all salvation uh, all that your salvation makes available to me is not only for the future, but I walk in faith and not in fear today because I'm living and experiencing, I'm beholding your salvation right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for this, uh, this ability, Lord, to spend time with you and to enjoy our salvation today. Hallelujah. You are worthy of all praise. We magnify and we exalt you this morning. We lift you up. We thank you for the miracles that you're working. 
Thank you for the miracle for our family this weekend. Lord, you've been so faithful. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, that we can trust you in all situations. And I know, God, that so many others today are hurting and are in situations of uncertainty. Help them to take hold of your salvation right now. Hallelujah. Your healing, your provision, your protection, your deliverance. Let them behold it today and take it as their own. In the name of Jesus. Touch Pastor DeLot right now. He needs a miracle in his body. We pray they would find the source of this bleeding immediately, Lord. That he would be able to begin to recover quickly. In Jesus' name. We pray for Marsha with her upcoming surgery. For those who are recovering from surgery. My mom and Jessica Marquez and Amy C. In Jesus' name. Carmen Bolaware facing spinal surgery. Harold Ramey needing to have a surgical procedure on his legs to remove vein blockages. In the name of Jesus, Lord, move for him. Move for uh, Pam's mother today. Lord, touch her body and minister healing to her. Right now, we pray. You are well able, God. We thank you and we glorify you today. You're our healer. You're our everything, Lord. Whatever that we need this morning, you're here with us. And you're meeting those needs. We thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah. Lord, touch those suffering with diabetes today. You see Belinda and Jimmy and Cheryl, Brother Pulliam, Christian and Titus, Cindy and Lloyd, Tim Workman, Steve Cummins, Anthony and Michael Williams, my Aunt Emily, Evie, Rose, Rebecca, J.R., Natalie, Lola, Grady, Holly, Zex, former co-worker's husband, and myself, Lord, touch us today with your power. You are our healer today. Those with liver problems and heart disease and kidney issues, stomach pain and problems, mobility issues and back pain, those suffering from arthritis and Parkinson's disease, those suffering with migraine headaches, reach down and touch them today. In the name of Jesus, those with lung conditions, those who are battling cancer this morning, God, minister healing to them those going through precautionary treatments, those suffering from dementia and from MS. Lord, move for Tracy today that her home would sell. Lord, that she could take some of the stress off of her uh, daily routine. We pray, God, for continued recovery for Anthony and Buddy, for Billy Huey and Joey, for Dwayne and John, and for Steve Echeverria, for Pastor Chris Dew, for Brother David Kent, for my dad today, we believe for strength, Lord, for continued and full recovery for each of them. We pray for Mr. Jennings on hospice care today. Lord, be with him. Strengthen him and his wife today. We pray, God, for these children today who are suffering in body. You are their healer. Hallelujah. You are their provider today. Strengthen their caregiver. Strengthen their families today as well. Hallelujah. Touch Kay and Sue today. Touch Shannon and Carl and Eddie, Lois and Venus and Randy. We pray for Robbie, for Cheryl's uncle, for Ann and for Robin, for Cheryl Ogden, for Bob Perkins, for Judy's brother, for George Tibbs, Michelle Clark, Devin Huff, Johnny Nelson, and all others that have physical needs today. Those who are in nursing homes, we believe for their strength today, their encouragement Hallelujah. We pray they would receive the competent and compassionate care that they need. In Jesus' name, those serving in our military right now, God, protect them. Move in Israel and Ukraine. We pray peace there. We pray peace for our nation. We pray a turnaround in our political environment here, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray, Lord, that the judicial system on the higher levels would step up, God, to protect the people of this nation from lawfare that could come to any one of us. We know this is a weapon that will be used by the Antichrist. And we pray, God, that you would, uh, that you would stay these um, uh, weapons that are being used politically right now that could apply not only to a few, but to many that could, uh, could be used against uh, every Christian. Lord, we pray your help and your strength in these last days. We know your word tells us that unless these days would be shortened, that none would be able to uh, survive it, God. But you've given us that promise, uh, Lord, that you are going to shorten those days. We look for your coming, for your soon appearing, God, 
We pray you would help us, God, to uh, to bring forth a church uh, for your namesake, uh, the called out ones, the ecclesia, Lord, for your namesake in our various cities. Uh, we pray, God, you would bless every church, uh, Lord, every soul winner today. Help us, God, to be about our Father's business, to be doing your will in our communities that many souls would be saved. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord, for Belinda. You see her needs today, her unspoken needs, her family needs, the situations that she deals with financially, the uh, discouragement that she has been battling. We pray, Lord, for uh, the family situation that's ongoing there. We pray for her friend who needs deliverance from depression and from others, Lord, with mental health issues and those dealing with uh, suicidal thoughts and depression in the name of Jesus, Lord, have your way today. You are well able, God. Every name that we've mentioned this morning, you care about. You died for them. Hallelujah. You purchased their salvation. You purchased their deliverance. You purchased their provision. You purchased their protection. Hallelujah. You purchased their healing. You paid it in full. And we receive it today by faith. We believe for prodigals to return home. We believe for families who are suffering today, God, to be made whole. We pray against dysfunction. We pray against addictions today. Hallelujah. We believe for change to break from people's lives. We pray, God, for our RCF residents and our Job Corps students that revival would continue there. In the name of Jesus, we pray for those who are being tried and tested in their faith and who are discouraged to be uplifted today. Help them, Lord, to behold your salvation this morning. Hallelujah. Bless our North American missionaries, our global missionaries. Lord, let your hand be upon Brother Willis as he travels tomorrow. Bring him here safely. Lord, with every part of the trip, the flight and the uh, driving uh, here to southeast Missouri by rental car, we pray, God, that everything would go smoothly for him, that they would have a powerful service in Scott City, that souls of would be affected for all eternity through that service. And we pray for our midweek rally that your spirit would be poured out upon us, God, and that you would use him, Lord, in that service, uh, Lord, for what we need in that hour. In the name of Jesus, we pray, God, for all of our fellow laborers, churches around us that are working, Lord, to bring souls into your kingdom. Bless their efforts today. In Jesus' name, help us, God, to do your will. We give you the praise and we give you the glory. We give you the honor. You're moving in every need and every situation. We pray, Lord, for peace and comfort for the Kaufman family, for the Yin family today, for others who have lost someone dear to them recently. We pray you'd move for the Cummins family in this uh, family situation they're dealing with today. Lord, be with them in that meeting. We pray, God, for their children that they would be saved work in their lives. Whatever it takes, God, for salvation is what we desire. In Jesus' name, we pray, Lord, for Judy Johnson's family. We pray for Johnny's mother and his brother Alan, his niece Jessica, their unspoken needs. For Terry's youngest sister, Robin Kay. For Venus's daughters. For Judy Williams' family. For Rose Brown's unspoken need. And for Belinda's unspoken needs today, God. We know that you are able to do anything Hallelujah. Let your will be done in every situation. That is our prayer. Not our will, Lord, but your will be done. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we give you all praise for what you're doing right now. Hallelujah. We receive these answers to prayer. We thank you for protecting Addie in that car accident, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, you are able let your protection be upon each of our prayer team members today. Guide them through their day and bless their efforts for your kingdom's sake. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, prayer team. Thank you for praying with me. Once again, if you uh, joined us late in the broadcast today, you must go back and listen to the report of uh, the miracles that God is doing. Uh, that's at the very beginning of today's uh, prayer and devotion. So go back and listen to that so we can celebrate together. I'm sure it will increase your faith for things you're believing God for as well. Have a great day in the Lord. I'll see you tomorrow morning right here on Facebook at 7.30 a.m.
God bless you in Jesus' name.